Otro tema también muy controvertido en el mundo, tanto del entrenamiento de perros como incluso de los propietarios de perros, es el tema de la dominancia. Eh, existen como dos grandes grupos eh, de opinión, unos que consideran que nuestra relación con los perros debe estar basada en una especie de replicación de reglas de dominación para que funcionen, y otro grupo que niega que los perros eh, tengan relaciones de dominancia y sumisión y que afirma que incluso en el caso de tenerlas no las aplicaría a otra especie como es la nuestra, sino que solo serían para relacionarse con otros perros. ¿Cuál es la realidad de cómo funciona la dominancia en los perros y cómo influye en nuestra relación con ellos? Yes, dominance does exist. Dominance plays a big role between dogs, and dominance plays a certain role between humans and dogs. Uh, that's very clear. To simply uh, it does, say it doesn't exist is uh, is 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 blindfolding yourself against uh, the reality. And the reality is that uh, dogs have a much steeper dominance hierarchies already hierarchy already in their brains than wolves have. Uh, so this seems to be an adaptation of how people dealt with dogs for thousands and thousands of years. They kind of put them into submissive positions. This does, however, not mean that you have to dominate your dog. Um, but, but what it means, a dog would expect a much clearer leadership from the side of the human than a wolf would. Uh, and if you would call that dominance, okay. I would call it leadership, because uh, when I'm talking about dominating somebody, it has a negative connotation and it's usually, usually uh, connected to some kind of pressure, force, violence, whatever. Um, threatening somebody, this is, and, and this switches on a totally different set of mechanisms in the brain and in the mind, then if you are able to exert a kind of leadership where the dog or other people are happy to work with you because that switches on a mindset which is related to relaxation, which is related to reward systems in the brain and which produces most of the time much better results. But there is no fix rule. Um, there may be, may be instances, for example, when especially men are working with real macho male dogs, there may be uh, uh, occasions where from time to time you have to dominate this dog. You have to tell the dog, listen, I'm the boss and not you, okay? Uh, this is certainly hardly ever the case with a female dog, but there may be special instances where, yeah, something like, uh, uh, dominating the dog uh, every now and then uh, is is a necessary thing to do. But this is a very personal thing between the dog and a certain person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is no general need to dominate a dog. There is no need uh, dominating a, a dog puppy uh, to make it obedient. Uh, but there is a lot of need of cooperating with a dog puppy, to work with a dog puppy in a positive way. And if you, if you start like this, then if you see the needs of your dog, if you have the right timing, if you uh, also say no from time to time to your dog, then you will exert the kind of leadership which, which is on the positive side and which conforms very well with the expectations in the brain of your dog. So if you do too much of the negative domination, you will get a dog which may be totally obedient, but which switches off thinking, which is no partner anymore. And uh, yeah, so that would be my position. Yes, dominance does exist, but you don't have to use it in doctrine, usually.